And we're off. Cool. This is the Marley call for Monday, May 1st, 2023. Um, we are trying to write a books, uh, which is a plural singular of book, which is part of the joke here. So um, shall we check in or catch up? I, I'm a little off on agenda and where we are. So um, let's get our little ball rolling here. Anybody like to check in? Go ahead, Pete. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I heard you, uh, the intake of breath. I was like... <laughs> um, uh, first, uh, where I think we are, maybe. Um, so I, th I think the, the main thing that we're doing, I think, Jerry, you have a Google Doc, maybe, or a, um, you have a document someplace. Yeah, yeah. I've, got a, I've, I've got an Obsidian Doc. Which one, which page were you thinking about? The Obsidian tasks? Doc. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. The um, I, th I think where we are is picking a first book. Um, yeah. So I think that's a good thing. Thanks, Klaus. And yes, and that is the potential outline. Thanks, Klaus. That's perfect. You know, and actually now that I think about it, we had decided, I think, to do uh, a Garden World summarization. Yeah. We were looking at maybe picking a chapter out of Garden World as a candidate chapter for the edited volume, but we didn't really like we didn't have enough uh, understanding of the book to figure out like what was a good excerptable modularizable piece or a chapter or less. Was than it, a yeah, I, I yeah the the idea I came away with um, and it classes the suggestor from he might know better than me, but the idea that I came away with was. I want to say chapbook, um, uh, like a a small, you know, like a like the five pager um, overview of Garden World, maybe something like that. So maybe that wasn't what su was suggested, but <clears throat> I think it's got potential. And um, I have to go ahead. Uh, so, so that's where I think we are, and I think that sounds like a, a good thing to keep doing. Um, uh, I am looking forward to the day when we collaboratively edit this rather than doing it on your obsidian. But yes. we don't have to go there yet. Um, the other thing I'm looking forward to, and we don't have to go there yet, is uh, a better task management system. Um, the a, a thing that's um, actually a couple things that are really alive for me right now. Um, one of them is. Um, uh both in Lionsburg and something that a project that David Bovel's got um, called Map of the Future um, by Modi. Um, uh, they are both looking at um, uh, taking a team like this, this size of a team is actually perfect. A team like this is perfect. Um, and creating a little organizational structure around the team or of the team. Um, so uh, in the same way that we might soon come up with a project plan, you know, here's what we're working on, here's what we're doing. Um, here's, here are the kind of the roles and responsibilities we've talked about. Here are the outcomes we're, we're trying to move towards. That's a project plan. Um, we could also, we might also specify some of the organizational stuff. And having said that in this room now, I feel like it's going to sound like I'm ahead of myself. Um, I think I'm not. I think we're not. Um, uh, but for those of you who know my everything is a project kind of like, you know, you should have a template that and, and fill it out and customize it. Um, a new saying that is coming up with uh, Lionsburg and, and um, David Bovel is everything is an organization. So, um, what's the, and I'm gonna use big words here and I don't mean them in a big way. What's the governance structure? What's the ownership structure of the things that are getting created? Um, how we decided to share them or not share them? Uh, how do we add team members? Uh, when we add team, num team members or more particularly when people contribute, how do we kind of memorialize and honor uh, those contributions in the project? Um, 
I, I, I now having having uh, heard a little bit more, actually having gone through a couple hours in each place talking about that, it seems like something I want to do everywhere I'm working in a project. You know, let's let's instead of kind of just having a fuzzy, you know, not thinking about it thing, let's actually discuss that for an hour on one of our meetings, write it all down and and then keep going, but have some more context around how we're doing it, what we're doing together, what we're expecting to contribute and, and benefit from out of the project. I, I think that's really important. Um, I don't think we have to do that today. Um, I would really, really like it if we did it in the next two or three weeks or so, um, because I'm going to be doing this everywhere I'm working. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's gonna be good for everybody. Um, uh, is the reason I'm interested in doing it at all. Um, another thing that's super live for me is uh, there are a few of us, a, a, a few folks um, who are setting up a, um, a business oriented course on how to integrate ChatGPT uh, into your work and your, your business or your organization. Um, I don't, I don't, I, it, it intersects with this one a little bit because we're using some of the same tool sets. Um, Massive Wiki is gonna be a par big part of that. Um, uh, there's obviously an interaction between the writing projects that, that we've got. Maybe, obviously for me, maybe not obviously for everybody. There's a, um, there's a big or, or intersection between how you use ChatGPT to be more productive and writing books in this new age of ChatGPT um, that I think this, project should explore in the next again few weeks doesn't have to be right now but <clears throat> it's something that we need to talk about um, and it's not just for writing tasks uh, chat gpt can be used for organizational tasks uh, summarization tasks uh, project management brainstorming a bunch of a bunch of stuff it's not just you know it's not just hey chat gpt write my essay for for me that's like a degenerate use case. Um, there's much more interesting and productive use cases. And I think we would be well advised to, to examine them at least. Um, so that's top of mind for me. Oh, and one more obvious, maybe obvious thing. Um, uh, Plex is this week. Um, uh, I hope it works out that I can write something up about this project and into Plex. Um, one of the people, um, I talked to Rick Botello um, this morning. Um, he's actually interested in this project, uh, or at least he was interested in the project a month ago when you know he first heard about it. Um, uh, he thought it was connected to the Thursday calls, like the, the calls for this meeting were on Thursday. And I said, no, 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 it's actually on Monday. Um, so I sent him uh, some times and he may or may not be able to make it. And, but. Um, I, we need a little bit to do a little bit more where we need to continue to do outreach into the OGM community and maybe other communities. Um, uh, makes me think there's, there are a couple other communities that this community should know about, but uh, I can cover that later and maybe in the Plex or something like that. But anyway, I, I, I might get around to writing up something for the Plex uh, if we could do that together on this call or if somebody wants to help me do that um, uh, between now and Wednesday, that would be awesome. That's me, thanks. Thanks, Pete. And I think just uh, putting together an update would be great to do. Uh, Stacy, off to you. This is gonna be an annoying question, but can somebody <laughs> clarify for me the purposes for this project? Not an annoying question. <laughs> um, so the original project stood up because Pete said, hey, let's go write an edited volume. And so Pete's challenge to OGM is on a, pa on a page in the wiki. Uh, and then I kind of said, <clears throat> yes, that's on my agenda of things to do. And I've also got these ideas about neobooks. So the, the, the project kind of has grown a little bit. But at its start, we just want to write the quick first book is like the beginnings of it. And where the book elements are modules written in Markdown on GitHub, and then they we create some software that rolls them up uh, and, and exports them into a book format like EPUB or Kindle file format uh, or, so, or PDF or something like that. Sorry, go ahead. It looks like you want to ask yeah, some more, yeah. more so specific I, questions. I understand, I understand that. I think my question is, 
can somebody give me three good reasons why this is a good project to do, why this is worthwhile? Oh, I'm not saying um, it's not. It's, I just want to hear three good worth, reasons. <laughs> it's worthwhile because uh, OGM is currently a thinking body and we, you know, we, um, we exchange a lot of thought and we have a, a fair bit of knowledge uh, that we could be sharing with the world. Right now, the way that we share that knowledge, <laughs> it's funny that I even say it that way. The right way that the current way that we share that knowledge is we talk amongst ourselves. Um, and oh, by the way, uh, it goes into a few places. Maybe it'll go into my blog once in a while. It goes into Jerry's brain. Uh, it, it gets spooled into YouTube recordings that nobody ever watches, et cetera, et cetera. So we are doing a really crappy job of remembering topics and conversations and knowledge for ourselves. We don't have a place, you know, in the in the infrastructure to be able to point to it. Maybe the OGM mailing list, which is kind of private, um, you know, and, and completely not organized. Uh, we don't have a place that we're putting it for us. And we especially don't have a place to help teach the world. So I think most of us want to make a better world, want to help the world be a better place. And this project uh, is a key, you know, if we, if we do it, it's a key way for us to help the world be a better place based on the things that we know and that we share amongst ourselves. We should share better. So is um, one of the goals of this project, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is one of the goals of this project to be able to lend support to people that want to write these books? I, I think a core goal is for any, any person in OGM who has been talking a lot and knows a lot, this project should be kind of plug and play. Hey, let's add you to, you know, let's, let's add your ideas and thoughts and knowledge notionally. Let's add them to a bookshelf. Now, can we help you fill in that book? You know, we'll help you. We'll gather some other people, maybe inside OGM, maybe outside of OGM. Let's do that. So it's, it's yeah, a, a, I think almost a stated goal. Um, we're still busy writing all this stuff down, but it's one of the goals is for every anybody who's in OGM, we want to help you. I used um, I used a metaphor over the weekend. There was a really cool conference this weekend, Complexity Adventures. Um, well, you'll hear more about it. Um, I was telling people this project is helping to condense um, uh, our knowledge um, into um, physical form, basically. So, and by condense, I don't mean shorten. I mean, like, we have a bunch of water vapor. And the idea of this thing is, is to actually make it take shape and take form um, so that it's, you know, real and that we can pass along to other people. And the um, purpose of the sample book? The, the purpose of the sample book is to turn the crank once. Um, so all of us, you know, after talking together, have an idea of how this works. But until we actually put rubber to the road and do, you know, one turn of the crank and say, oh, look, that process was great, or oh, look, that process really sucked, or, you know, somewhere in the middle, and here's how we could improve it, right? Um, so, so I think we've hit two. I, since you asked for three, <laughs> I have to try to get to three. Um, the first one is to actually, um, practicalize our knowledge into artifacts. Um, another one is to help any OGM member um, as we, we practicalize their knowledge. And a third one, which I don't think we've discussed, but it's obvious given the, the other ones, um, as we do our process, we should be writing down how our process works and then we should gift that pro process to other people, right? So not just OGM. Um, uh, Lionsburg is doing actually Lionsburg has some similar thoughts about similar process so we should be coordinating with them but um, uh, map of the future uh, has I think we'll we'll be writing down our process before they're writing down their process um, even though they have a similar process too so I guess maybe that's a maybe there's a, a two reasons in there one reason is other people are doing similar kinds of things um, and we should join up with them. And then another one is there are groups that don't do this kind of thing yet. They don't know how to have a publishing, you know, a sense, sense making, sense doing kind of focus on their knowledge. Uh, they're not doing it and they don't have a publication process. 
will have documented our process and um, and we'll be able to help them adopt it. Thank you. And I did a little screen sharing sort of to try to inject <clears throat> another reason, which is that I think Marley prototypes a new way to think of books. That if we do this properly, we're actually doing a little bit of pioneering in uh, leveling up media in um, helping people think differently about what a book is and how it works in the world. It's in, in a way that's kind of articulating Jerry's ideas around new books. Um, and there's a, a thing that I think Jerry talks about that I haven't heard many places, other places. It's, it's a pattern um, that we see in some places, but um, Jerry articulates, is one of the best articulators of it. Once you have a bookshelf of books, and each of the books is something like a massive wiki, um, probably what you want to start doing is breaking the books down into nuggets. Um, and if you modularize it right, the nugget from social, the social justice book might also be a nugget that you end up re just maybe just using or repurposing into a nugget on regenerative agriculture, right? Um, so another thing I think we're shooting for is not just making big uh, monolithic neo books, but actually making modular neo books out of nuggets and then being able to compose and recompose those in different ways. You might actually just take the regenerative agriculture book and with the nuggets, you might compose another regenerative agriculture book. Maybe one is um, for business folks um, and uh, another one is for agriculture folks and another one is for scientists and another one is for practitioners out in the field. Um, so the nuggets for any of those, you could you know, rearrange them and get another, another neo book. Maybe one's for uh, elementary school kids, one's for high school kids, one's for adults. Um, uh, similarly, uh, Jerry's got the idea that you could take, you can kind of take a table of contents that points to uh, nuggets and turn that into a book. If you change the table of contents, maybe you get a new book. Um, if you change, if you take that table of contents and and have nugget summaries or something like that, maybe you can take the same playlist that creates a book and create a presentation instead. Um, if you take the, uh, so, so now if you kind of keep in that same thing where we've got nuggets and tables of contents slash playlists and presentations and books, maybe you can do the same thing with transcripts of calls. Um, uh, maybe you can take a transcript of a call, cut it up into nuggets, repurpose it a little bit and turn it into another call. Um, or another podcast or another book. So the input for things like neobooks is very similar to the output of things like calls um, and transcripts. And you know, and the nuggetization process kind of works for everything. Um, so uh, Lionsburg and Map of the Future both have really well developed ideas about podcasts, making podcasts, and then using the podcast materials to turn into larger materials. We're continuing to kind of flesh that out. Our, our project, Jerry has, is connected to Jerry, it's connected to, pod, to podcasts through Jerry, but um, uh, we flesh out a little bit more of the, the production process and some of the publication stuff. Although Lionsburg is actually marching forward on publication to publication process. I, I get the feeling for what it's worth, I, I don't know how I've kind of bumped into this, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in the center of, or I feel like I'm at the edge, um, feeling, uh, being a mycelial connector between lots of communities that are kind of doing the same thing. There's more of that in the air of the past month or two than there has been for two years. Um, and it's, you know, you fall into another group of people and it's like, wow, they have a lot of the same patterns that we do. Um, and here's where ours are better, here's where theirs are better, and we're all kind of doing the same thing. So, more of it. I think, in, uh, Stacey, does that answer your questions? Yes. Satisfactorily? Yes, thank you. Um, 
Cool. Uh, I think a lot of what we're trying to figure out is how do things work going forward? And can we prototype some of them? And can we borrow others and use them and apply them and so forth? Uh, and so earlier when Pete was talking about the governance conversation, um, um, I'll just go back to that for a sec. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm, on, I'm ambivalent about it because I've seen other efforts of ours to go do work stall, you know, and basically crater on that reef, basically, you know, uh, crawl up on that reef and unable to solve all, the, all those questions of how do we attribute value? What do we do? Then just sort of uh, interest waned and, and we went away. But if we were, and I'm going to oversimplify here, but if we were able to find a platform or a set of agreements, a platform and a set of agreements and so forth, where we could add water stir and just jump in and climb in and, and adopt them and use them, that would be pretty fantastic. So I think the conversation about it and the scan for platforms and the testing to see if somebody else is already doing this in a way that makes them happy makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm I would just love to find one of those that that comfortably fits what we're trying to get done. Um, and then that kind of meshes into this other thing, which is a rethinking of ideas and books and publications and conversations and community and innovation and sense making because because a book a book is sense hopefully made and then frozen in carbonite uh, and then sent out into the world to do its work. Uh, and we're trying to sort of connect the book and make the book just be a, the veneer over the communities and people who came up with the ideas and who are busy making them better and making them more usable. That, that's part of the ideas behind why this, why this is different from just a normal book project. Pete, go ahead. Um... So makes total sense, Jerry. Um, it would be nice to find models uh, for the governance, you know, structure, organizational structure stuff. Um, uh, and it also makes total sense not to strand the project on, you know, not the high center of the project on, you know, how are we going to organize ourselves? Um, David Bovel's actually, I, when he talks about it, he, I, I, I really like the way he says it. He's, he says a lot of stuff about light touch. It should be mostly invisible for, um, for regular folks. Only the people interested in infrastructure should really be dealing with you know, how the infrastructure works and how to set it up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I, I think it's more important to get the work done than to figure out how to organize the organization. But you can, I, I think you can kind of do both of them in parallel with a bias towards action and bias towards output a bias towards getting stuff done. And, you know, and at the same time, kind of building the organizational structure. The, the, there's a good news, bad news thing about other patterns. Um, uh, and it's funny, I listened to David, I listened to Jordan. David's is underwritten down, Jordan's is overwritten down. Um, so the good news and bad, bad news is there's not, it's not really well written down anywhere. Um, uh, or it's or it's not written down well. Uh, so I can imagine one of the books that this project should be working on is how to do organizational structure. Here's how we do it. Here's a couple other examples. Um, so I'm I'm actually really excited about this project being a sense doing project around organizational structure, without meaning that we have to do a good job of making organizational structure before we get that book going. Um, so the bad news is it's not, you know, it's, it's, I, the good news is another good news thing. It's conceptually pretty small. Um, the, the details of it get large, but conceptually the organizational structure is, is pretty small and you could just write it up in, in, in a half hour, probably 40 minutes um, and then say, okay, this is kind of what we're operating under. You know, it's not, it, it's not legal quality yet. It's not finished yet. But this is kind of you know the the spirit under which we we want to work together. And okay, let's get to work um, instead of um, doing meta work, which is boring. So, and anyway, long story short, writing down an organizational structure is one of the things that's top of mind for me and could be a good project for this thing once it gets going.
And what's interesting also is that uh, Vincent and uh, uh, Catalyst and uh, Wendy McLean and her tapestry and so on and so forth are other manifestations of the same sets of units in interaction and ways of seeing them. It's, it's like the maps are ways of seeing them. The platform is a way of moving value through them and acknowledging uh, you know, the creation of value and participation. All these things are just different facets of the same little uh, holographic thing in the middle that we're trying to um, build and maybe also live inside. So that that's kind of slowly the way that we're, the way we're working toward, I guess. And then there are many other communities that we can see on the horizon that are doing similar work, so, some of which probably have invented platforms we would like to use. Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, um, I, I sort of have to reach back to where we started from, which was um, climate change is a you know, serious uh, issue that is impacting the food supply. You have to regionalize uh, uh, agriculture and, and food into bio, into bio regions, which all have unique uh, needs and characters uh, based on soil and water and socioeconomics and climate and so on. Um, and that means a departure from this uh, industrialized monocropping system um, and, uh, and shifting uh, towards, towards local and regional foods. So, so then uh, you know, we had a discussion with Doug's book, Garden World, but Doug is missing here. And I don't think he's any, he's interested to be very honest with you. I mean, I pinged him and he didn't respond and he would have responded by now if, if this was of interest to him. So I think Garden World is sort of, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model or an image, but I don't think that you know, we, we, we can use his book, but we can also use something else. Um, it's an idea, basically. Uh, and the idea was that it defines a destination. So there is, you know, there is this description of what a world could look like that, that has achieved a sort of this garden world image, uh, meaning a self-sustaining uh, uh, regional network you know, that takes care of its food supply, food security, but also uh, the, the, the socioeconomic um, uh, needs of a community, you know? So, I mean, feeding low-income people, providing jobs for, for people who... Um, who are otherwise at the periphery of the economy, providing food and shelter, you know, combinations of food and shelter, which is what Gene posted there, the whole idea of intentional communities and so on. So there are multiple ways uh, in which a community uh, can create a spectrum of um, living uh, uh, within, within uh, sustainable means starting with regenerative because we have to overcome the depletion that has taken place already so we can repair and then maintain. So that's one thing. And then you know, uh, Gene and I are working on a different work stream as well where we're saying, so how do you get from, from here to there, right? I mean, how do, you, how do you make this transition? And what we just this morning discussed you need champions in the community who take on doing stuff. You know, so, so mostly every one of these projects that we can dig up, you know, where we uh, uh, say, wow, this is really cool. You know, this is a living community or here is a, uh, a farm that uh, 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 is multi-crop, is integrated livestock, and they're providing you know, wonderful organic products to the community. Everywhere you see that, there is somebody who made that happen, right? There's a champion who made that happen. And so to, to, to find you know, a book where you highlight a few champions who did cool stuff you know, would be one way of, uh, of stimulating you know, this conversation. And we are in search of providing process structures and supporting tools you know, to identify a potential champion and then supporting them, right? Here's how you go about it. You know, here's a presentation you take to the city council. 
to the chamber of commerce, to the local farmers, right? So to provide tools. Um, so, so that's sort of the the broad, broad picture of uh, of what's in my head, you know, sort of what I'm envisioning there. You know? I like it. It's a it's a picture that coincides well with what I'm thinking about. Um, Gene, go ahead. Yeah, to close this point, I mean, the awareness of the necessity of moving to a, a more sustainable living environment is, is becoming more and more accepted, though you can't simply tell people they have to do it. They have to see examples of how it's been done so that they have a confidence that it's actually doable as opposed to they have to figure it out for themselves. And that's why I, I liked the outline of the book, because I've run across numerous examples that I think fit the book or fit the, the six case studies that we talked about for this particular piece of work. And, and none of them are monumental efforts where somebody was trying to figure out how to get a thousand people to change what they were doing before you could make step one. It was little things simply done and built upon. So, I mean, if you go back to to Pam Warhurst in in, in I forget the Todd name Morton. Todd Morton, you know, she said, "If you eat, you're in." Okay, I mean, how do you argue with that one? Totally agree. And, and and I think the goal partly is to tell stories of things that work. So for all of those people who think it's impossible, they have all these examples that prove that it's been done. Klaus and Jane just reminded me. Do we know? Do we know Jane? Does somebody here know Jamie Alexander? Jane Alexander, which one? From Project Drawdown. Oh, no. I was thinking she, I was hoping that somebody here would know her yeah. because I was thinking she would be a person that would be worth to have a conversation with that might know of a lot of examples and it would be a good way to increase our network as well. Um, uh, Jamie, uh, oh. Jamie Alexander. Correct. Yeah, yeah Jamie Beck Alexander. Yep. Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna stick my neck out a little bit um hopefully i this doesn't sound like off the reservation um yeah. my understanding of this project uh is that regenerative agriculture or food system security or or something like that is is a number of the volumes on our on the bookshelf that we'll be working on but that there might be others that I wouldn't say are part of that. So um, uh, so totally randomly um, off of the original proposal I wrote up. Um, <clears throat> other, other issues that we might know about um, are the rise of artificial intelligence, uh, the growing inequality gap, the erosion of democracy, um, environmental degradation. Uh, so I, I think were maybe maybe put it differently. I know I'm topic agnostic agnostic, and I'm mostly working. I'm basically working on infrastructure. Um, so, and I think that's similar to Marley. I think we're topic agnostic, um, and a little bit less focused on infrastructure. We're actually uh, focused on operationalizing using the infrastructure to to make work outputs, but it might be about the war in Ukraine or wars in general or social injustice and not just environmental concerns or, you know, regenerative ag. Does that, am I kind of on base or off base? Go ahead, Stacey. 
No, that was part of why I asked my original question. So I'm glad that you said that because I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, and for me, just riffing on what you said, Pete, um, I think we have interests in a whole bunch of different areas, many of which you just enumerated. We are not top 1% world experts in kind of any of these things, except for a couple little fringy things where we've done some lead, some interesting leading edge work. So I, so I think that a piece of what we're trying to do here that matters is process. Like how does this work so that other people who know more than we do can come join the party and can use this process to share knowledge in new and more interesting and more useful ways out into the world. That would be really groovy. So that what we're doing is setting up an example and a pattern and writing up what the process is and making maybe making it available as a field manual, which is just an example of a, a book, a neo book that that Marley produces. Um, but but we're sort of in some sense um, trying to create a contagious process that shifts the way shifts the way people share knowledge, share what what they know, and maybe helps other people become aware of stuff they didn't know was possible, and then go, wait, how do I do this? And because they learned about it in a Marley-like publication, the resources are easily at hand, and the communities to help them are at hand, and they can sort of go down the chute and start like getting engaged, as opposed to you watch a TEDx talk and then it's like. Well, okay, you get to go start doing your basic research to figure out what's where and and how to how to do any of this. Um, so I think that's a, a piece of it as well. And Jean, you still have your hand up. I don't know if you want to be in the queue. So are we more or less agreed with these things, or are there points in what we're saying where we're disagreeing that I'm not noticing? It doesn't feel like we're saying things to each other that are controversial or that change what we're up to that much, if at all. I would just argue that um, each topic we pick, there has to be uh, a subject matter expert at the table. So uh, if it's AI, well, we you know, can do that. You know, what I mean, we, we have that. But so, so for each topic, you know, there is a there is a subject matter uh, um, uh, expertise required to really to really flesh this out and, and move it. And we have plenty of uh, of uh, uh, experts on various topics within the OGM community. Cool. I I'd I'd like to agree with that and and suggest maybe a little tweak, which is um, I I think if there's a topic we we kind of know about and want to know more, uh, a, a pattern that we might use is to write kind of a placeholder book. You know, here's, here's a topic that we're thinking of um, and here are some of the issues. We are in, now we are in search of, of people who actually know what this means. Um, water, you know, water in, well, the water situation in Australia. Actually, I know the expert for that anyway, but um, experts. Uh, but anyway, you know, I, I, I like, I like Klaus that we want to make sure that when we're actually producing artifacts that we're proud of, there that they involve subject matter experts, not just not just ChatGPT. I very much like the pattern Pete just described of taking a first best swing at an issue we think is important, and then seeing where that goes and seeing if we can grow that to include smarter people than us, better solutions than what we came up with, whatever else it might be, so that the work evolves over time. So that volume three or edition, sorry, the third printing of a particular book um, is in fact a much better rethought book that has a bunch of a bunch of new materials and new participants in it, is not just, oh gosh, these things have happened since we published the first version of the book, the first edition, and so here's a new edition. Um, that would be great because then the books become alive over time. Um, and I think that's a lovely thing. Uh, and also that means that we shouldn't be afraid to dive into things where we don't have deep subject matter expertise, but strong opinions, as long as we frame it that way and make clear that we're looking to make these things better over time. Sorry, Jean, go ahead. No, I was just going to agree with you that it needs to be oh, in, heck, in some that. form. Okay, I'll stop agreeing with you then. So we, it needs to be of some form that allows it 
to not in major revisions, but continually evolve over time as an awareness of, of certain segments evolved to say, well, this is what we thought yesterday and today we realized that, you know, that wasn't quite, quite where it needs to be. And now we understand better from inputs from whoever, but you don't know that until you surface it to people who are in a position to tell you that you're all wet. Right? I'm having an ongoing conversation with a friend who is in commercial real estate here in Portland about uh, one of the conversations we're having is about the repurposing of office buildings into residential, which turns out to be a really ugly deal for real estate people. It's incredibly expensive. It's annoying. It doesn't create enough housing. There's a bunch of things, but it's a major visible alternative. And he sent me a, a thought piece over the weekend from the Brookings Institute that was actually really good. And I liked a lot of what it said, and I didn't know enough to understand a bunch of the recommendations it made. And I was like, oh, okay. It shifted my understanding of the problem. And I keep wanting to go back and map the problem in ways, Gene, that you would be probably interested in and, and very really useful in as well because of your expertise with systems diagramming. Um, but but can we get to places where, well, okay, here's the book and here's sort of best, like science. Science is our best knowledge about something that's happening right now and it's open to re-evaluation as we discover new science. That's the what the scientific method, part of what it's supposed to do. Um, so here's our best take of it, but why wouldn't every book have a systems diagram and other resources that are sort of easy at hand and be tied into pages about all the different things that were mentioned in it, as opposed to a bibliography where it's like, good luck, go research again. In fact, the nodes would be really good resources for all the different elements. Um, go ahead, Pete. Um, I, I want to tease apart two related things that I think this project is. So I think one of them is the, the Marley process kind of, you know, here's here's a, a way that we, that we have successfully, it's funny saying that because we haven't yet, but in two weeks, we'll be able to say, here's a way that we successfully, you know, sense made and produced an output book. book. Um, so there's the, the process thing is one of the things that we're doing. A related thing is developing an imprimatur for uh, kind of a, you know an editorial voice for maybe OGM, for instance. Um, so I think it's really really useful if we separate those things um, and and observe that we're going to be using the publishing process, the Marley process, and hopefully other people will be too. Um, we're not going to agree with all the things that they're publishing, um, uh, and that's fine. So we're not stamping, you know, our stamp of approval on their things. Similarly, there are things on our bookshelf that are going to be stamped with some imprimatur. I don't know if it's Marley or OGM or Jerry Mikulski or Klaus Mager or Gene Bellinger or Stacy Juice. Um, uh, I maybe maybe i i think my guess is marley doesn't want to have an imprint or uh, <laughs> a mark like that um ogm <laughs> might um and then some subsets of us might separately um so if we have an ogm one and, and now it makes me feel like this, like I, I'm actually uncomfortable with the, the, those two functions being even on the same call, you know, at the same time, kind of. Sorry, they, can, can you contrast them again? Yeah, one of them is developing, a public, developing and using a publishing process, uh -huh. the Marley process. Another one of them is having an editorial board, essentially, um, whether that's one person or a few people who say, Here's an OGM bookshelf. Everything on the OGM bookshelf is of a piece. It's of a kind. It, it makes sense together. It's a holistic portion of a view of the world. Um, it doesn't have things that we don't agree with. It has things that we do agree with. And the things are harmonious together. Um, so, um, uh, and and basically, that's it's, it's like a publisher's imprint, right? It's like saying, every, and it, if you buy something from Harper's Collins, you know that it's not ha going to have a certain level of quality and, and it's not going to have certain things that you would hate to find, you know, 
um, in your reading. Um, uh, so Anarch Anarchist Cookbook is never going to be a HarperCollins um, book, um, for better or for worse. Uh, so I'm, I'm suggesting that, that there's probably an OGM imprint um, that the, when probably the same set of people here and maybe a few other people are turning the Marley crank, it's making, it's, it's for the intent of making an OGM imprint book, OGM published book. Um, when other people are turning the crank, it's for their imprint, you know, uh, there could be a Lionsburg imprint that's, you know, got another bookshelf that maybe some of, you know, we agree with some of them and we disagree with some of them. Um, maybe there's an anarchist cookbook shelf, um, and that's not the OGM bookshelf ever, you know, um, but they're using the Marley process to publish their stuff. So I think, I don't know if it's the same project. I don't know if it's Project Marley doing both of them, or I, it seems to me like that's two sub projects, sibling projects that are in parallel. Um, but I think that we need to have, so, so now I'm getting to where I was kind of wanting to start or, or, or pitch towards or something like that. I think, um, I think we need an editorial board and an editorial voice uh, or editorial kind of, you know, here's, here's the, the statement of what we publish, why we publish it, what we're trying to do with it. Um, and that's the kind of lens through which, another example for, for me is Wikipedia. Um, when Jimmy Wales and other people said we're building an encyclopedia, um, you know, people started to go, oh, okay, I, I know Encyclopedia Britannica, I can write Encyclopedia articles, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to get the door and I'm going to keep talking for another few seconds, but then I'll stop. Sure. Um, uh, and, and that focusing thing meant that Jimmy Wales, somebody could say, well, I want to write an article about my pet dog. You know, and Jimmy Wales consults his thing. And he says, my pet dogs don't belong in an encyclopedia. No, there, there we go. Uh, so focus, I have to go. Sorry, I'll be right back. Dean, you're up. A, probably a distraction, but your comment about con converting office buildings into residential buildings. I heard somebody say the other day, the best way to think out of the box is to get rid of the box. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can see where converting re office buildings into residential buildings, if you think about the residences in the same way that we have always thought about them, but if you think about them in a completely different way, think, them, think about them more like community levels. All right. So that there's the, like college dormitories. All right, as opposed to the typical every unit has to be complete unto itself, considering the homelessness, the homeless situation that continues to grow in the country and in the cost of everything. Sooner or later, we're going to have to find less expensive places for people to live. And so I thought. Thank you. I just pasted the link to the Brookings piece um, <clears throat> into the chat in case you're interested. Um, and a piece of what the Brookings piece says is, hey, if you're going to start doing a lot of this, then do it everywhere. And also, so don't do it just in inner cities, do it wherever there's buildings. And also allow for multiple use there. One place where they agree with everybody is that diversity matters a lot. And so, you know, allow for multi-purposing so that a place could become a nightclub, it could become uh, uh, educational, it could become whatever, not just flats, not just apartment apartment flats. Um, anyway, the whole issue is like really thorny and, and it's like everything we wind up talking about, whether it's regenerative ag versus industrial ag uh, or whatever, uh, these things are all thorny and they have lots of different um, angles and aspects to them. Um, the thing I wanted to say, but I kind of want to wait until Pete is back, but I can repeat it, is what I put in the chat that I think that over time there are individual and collective points of view. I don't know that OGMers as a whole, even a small <laughs> editorial board of OGMers are going to agree on what, <coughs> what their collective point of view is on a really diverse set of issues. I think that what we can agree on is that there's a bunch of collected works which are written in the OGM manner and spirit, whatever that may mean, um, and that within there are competing but com 
complementary points of view from individuals. So what Doug Carmichael thinks ought to be done for revitalizing cities may disagree with what several of us feel strongly about in, inside of it. And we may feel strongly enough about it to publish overlapping neo books that share a bunch of resources and chapters and then disagree in sort of editorial perspective or direction. And that's really okay and interesting. And it could, it could be the same thing about how to build more, you know, how to encourage regenerative farming among small farmers. It could be that we have two or three competing and different opinions about the best way to do that, which are all within the, the larger enclosure of, of OGM uh, material. And so they have a stamp. Uh, oh, there we go. How, mu how much of what I'm saying have you heard? None. Okay, good. Um, Not very much. Let me backtrack because I wanted to include you in it. I put in the chat um, individual versus collective and collective points of view. And what I meant was it's, it's unlikely that OGM as a whole is going to have a consistent crystalline um, specific point of view on a bunch of different things. But we could easily uh, say these different points of view are all within the OGM kind of way of expressing points of view and uh, sort of within, within the realm of what we think we're doing together. And then individuals might have sort of competing but overlapping perspectives on what to do very specifically on the ground about different things. And they might write a neo book. Uh, they might write neo books and publish them together and in a bundle even. Right. And that might be a really interesting way to think about a new thicket of issues. Uh, it could be debate style. It could be something else. I don't know. But but we could invent uh, some some sort of new uh, new ways of doing things here. And um, and then I think online, we might then find out that a piece of the Marley process and a piece of the wiki process and the massive wiki process and the OGM process involves adding our stamp, our imprimatur. <laughs> you opened that door. Um, to um, to pages that we agree with that speak for us. So if anybody's seen my Nuggets, Narratives, and Points of View um, video from way back when, Nuggets are, se are separate little ideas. You connect them up into narratives, and then you roll up narratives into points of view. And some points of view are yours that you authored, and that's hard. And some points of view are other people from wherever, and you're saying they speak for me. What they just said eloquently says... Uh, speaks for exactly how I feel about this issue. And in that case, it would be great if we could put our imprimatur on their page, maybe not on their page, maybe on Hypothesis or on a shadow internet that says, this thing over there specifically and, and elegantly speaks, says something I, meant, I would have said had I been able to. And then that's how we basically set up these different kinds of points of view that, that sort of roll up into arguments for policy. And, and this sounds really sort of complicated, but I thought earlier that one of my goals anyway in writing field manuals or as Pete was doing, using ChatGPT to generate descriptions of useful tools and, and thinking tools and frameworks, for example, as a, as a handbook, um, that those are things that we would like to leave at hand for other people who need their use um, to go put them to work. And, and that's a piece of the, the reason for doing any of this kind of stuff is that is that these are the tools that matter. So in some sense, we would be doing uh, a version of Whole Earth Access, um, which back in the day was a physically printed, large format, uh, almost newspaper tabloidy thing that contained in it, hey, here's all the really cool stuff you can mail order, you can phone in for, you can do whatever that leads to making for a better society on Earth. That's what Whole Earth Access sort of was. That's really interesting. And we have that we have it at our fingertips, the ability to create something with that kind of content and impact, except it's always constantly refreshed and the and the resources are just a click away and and and. So in some sense, there there's all these lovely sort of um, inspiring examples that went before us that didn't have all the technology at hand that we have uh, here. Mr. Bellinger. Tom Peters repeatedly said that innovation always comes from the wrong people in the wrong industry at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. And so that while people continue to say it's impossible until somebody proves them wrong. So any of the automobile manufacturers in the world could have built the electric car, but Tesla's doing it. So why? I mean, 
So the whole idea is to actually do some things that are contrary to conventional thought to spark some actual innovations. I, I posted a link to Theodore Levitt's Marketing Myopia paper, which is the landmark paper that talked about why the railroads got in trouble for being in a railroad business and, and Hollywood got in trouble for being in the movie business and then the oil companies are in trouble for being in the oil business as opposed to the, the energy business. And it just goes on and on and on. So it's a marvelous read and it's- That's the marketing, oh, my, that's the marketing myopia piece? Yeah, from 1975, I think. Thank you. That's so what do we have to do to take the next step forward? Um, I think two things from what we were just saying. One is to have the conversation Pete suggested at the top of the call about governance and things like that so that we are aware of it. And if we find something that actually really works, try it out and jump in. And number two is make progress on the quick first book, which is which is the only reason the quick first book is that an important thing up front is that we would like to turn out something that looks and smells like a book and say, hey, look, there's a book now. And, and I think that will help us attract more people into this project because they'll be like, oh, look, they turned out a book. And they're inviting people who want to do something like that in a novel way to come do more of that. And I just have to add, I purposely asked that question because of what Pete said about governance, because it's <laughs> it's always in my mind about the people who wouldn't normally speak up because they wouldn't feel like it was their place. So you asked them questions. I just did. <laughs> A great and I and I put and I posted my favorite quote. Think Nike. Just do it. Just build those sweatshops. Oh, sorry. So of the two things that Jerry mentioned, I think the more important thing is actually quick first book. Um, and we should get around to governance in the next few calls or something like that, lightly, not, not heavily. Um, and but actually doing something is going to be the, the good thing. And Pete, uh, I have as an open research question and have for a long time, what are the next two stacks, uh, the societal stack and the organizational stack? And the thing you're pointing to lies fat in the middle of the organizational stack. Like, hey, <clears throat> what, are, what, is, what does organization mean when talent dissolves and goes independent and comes together on projects and then dissolves back into the crowd? Um, how does this work in the long run? <clears throat> how do we how do we debilitate the overwhelming intellectual property over protection regime we have now, but still let people make a living from the things that they do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of very twisty, tangly questions here, some of which capitalism is going to resist wholeheartedly, but none of which they can keep us from experimenting with. Um, and so I would say, let's keep that as an open edited volume of some sort where let, let's maybe give it a name. And um, and as we learn things and as we have sort of events, maybe maybe that just is a I don't know how to describe it. I'm, I'm sort of making it up as, as I'm inspired by your putting it in front of us. But uh, maybe there's a way to have this be like the, the hall closet where we drop things in when we find them. And we, we kind of every now and then go look in there and like, hey, there's something starting to materialize here. Um, and don't think of it as the quick first book at all, because it's definitely not an easy thing up front but we think of it as a possible product along the way. And, and if we were incomplete, but had really good descriptions of the goals of the project and why it matters and what the benefits might be, but not the fixed solution, we might just publish that as an early, as an early volume that says, hey, here's kind of the state of what we think is up. And we're gonna, we, we have full intention of republishing this book um, in new editions as we learn more and as you, whoever read it, send us in stuff that's working. I think that would be beautiful. I would like to see that a lot. And we might have three authors of the first edited ed edition and 50 authors of the third edition. And that would be great. I, I think that the route for some of these neobooks is going to be very much 
like the route of a lot of academic or scientific papers, which is the number of authors is going through the roof, which is, I think, a great thing. Okay, so do we like the outline for the quick first book that we came up with two Mondays ago? Uh, if not, can we perfect it? Shall I screen share it? And Pete, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm we're in, sort of trapped in my obsidian for a moment, but I think for the 30 minutes we have left on this call, we can probably be okay with that. Uh, but let me share screen and go back to obsidian and find that guy. Here's sort of what we had from that conversation. Um, and I would love to improve this a bit um, now and then see where we want to go. I'd rather just go start collecting pieces and figure out where they fit when we got pieces. Um, okay. I build an out. I build an outline to fit the content that I have, as opposed to, you know, because because I don't know enough to build the outline. I don't think I know enough to build the outline. Um, I, I, I sort of have a thought about the kinds of things that I'm looking for. And as I find things along the way, I will get a better sense of how to organize them in a way that makes sense. But I think through conversation, we need to figure out where we're aiming. Because if you ask me for things that are interesting that might make their way into a book, I could give you a thousand tomorrow because I collect them. Um, you know, and I pin them, I pin them through their little wings onto a board called the brain um a little board yeah that little board and so and so i think that we we the more we can kind of narrow our focus on this and we got into that some in the discussion a couple of weeks ago where it was like well food really um, goes along with i think and and klaus i'm going to screw up the, my memory of the conversation but it was like um food is related to, to shelter as well and we should include shelter and i was like gosh that really complicates things because if you want people to redesign villages and create eco villages and do all that that has been a, a really slow moving thing but if we focus on things that people could do like now and keep the the, the time frame relatively short and tell positive stories uh, and and you know case studies of what's working that could actually maybe work better but i was trying to limit scope a little bit so that we could um, have something that didn't get lost in the visible quagmires, and I might be entirely wrong about that, but that was part of, part of what I was trying to 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 uh, steer us toward a couple weeks ago. Thoughts? I don't have a direct response to what you just said, but looking at this outline, it looks about five times bigger than I'd want the first book to be. Yes. And um, I think we need to um, throw things overboard. This was just a quick first brainstorming. I, I also like Gene's idea. So I, I um, Gene's suggestion, if if we knew, if we had a general, you know, a, a general direction, um, we wouldn't have a thousand things to decorate that that with. Um, well, the this. This chapter chapter with six case studies of homes and communities growing food is very specific and narrow. And I think we could find some nice examples like the one that Gene shared with us in, in the chat earlier in this call. Um, and also Todd Morton and the Edible Landscapes and uh, uh, several others. That, we, that This would be pretty easy. Um, I don't know that it's hard hitting. Um, I don't, I, we sort of have to weigh which of these stories are too simple or too easy um, that they won't have any like memory impact? I don't know. Um, uh, I would so like. Go if ahead. you're if you're inspired by that six case studies, so there's no not a real narrative around that, right? Right. Um, these are examples of a, the narrative that would be in the book. And they would make they would compose a chapter. Um, how would you summarize that the the narrative of the book that you're thinking of? People so, grow food. So that book is, it's really, really important to um, to improve um, water retention, soil fertility, all these complicated things. But we also kind of want to rebuild community and feed ourselves because the economy is sort of funky. Um, here, there are some really simple, practical, timely ways to do that. Here's, here's a few examples. And then closing chapter, here's what the frontiers are. Here, here's what's next. Uh, here are some movements to join. I don't know. I don't know what the, what, I don't know what the chapter is after the, the case studies, but three chapters 
like that feel like a book? So there are there are some simple ways to rebuild even the explanation of why we want to do it, I think is is a little bit challenging. But mm -hmm. just to say that here's some yeah, here's some here's the the general summary of of how you have bioregional food networks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And a couple case studies. You know, it doesn't have to be very voluminous. I mean, you can explain why should you care? I mean, that can be a paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's not, we don't, you know, not, don't overthink it and bake in social justice. Well, that, <clears throat> I mean, that can be a double paragraph, right? I mean, the, you know, how many people are disenfranchised from our current food system um, and so on. And then uh, soil health and fertility, water retention. I mean, th these are, I mean, this can be a really pretty slim book because you don't have to uh, uh, prove anything here, right? It's just making statements you know, of, uh, but but statements that we can back up in case anybody wants to challenge it. You know? But in the book itself, you can have a very logical, you know, abbreviated flow that gets you to hear some case studies what com what communities have done. And then I would say, following those case studies, it's so what do they all have in common? They all had a champion. You know, they all had somebody who rolled up the sleeves and just went out and pulled together some, some people into a team and made it work. Yep. What's the two or three sentence description of this book for, for you, Klaus? <clears throat> Or, or what is this book about? The book is about um, the world is changing. Um, the way we, uh, and, and the way we raise and consume food you know, is creating, has created some serious problems in the natural world, in, in our ecosystem. Um, so you should care because the way we grow food pollutes our watersheds. Now it destroys biodiversity, it destroys the soil, um, and also transfers uh, chemicals into the food supply that impact your personal health and the health of your children. So we know that in order to overcome um, uh, these 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 challenges, that we have to work local because soil and climate and access to water and socioeconomics are different uh, everywhere. Now they're very community-based. So we have to look at our community and figure out what uh, we can do here that is A, repairs the damage that has been done already, and then B, moves us into a sustainable, uh, uh, in a sustainable, uh, economy or in a in an economy that can sustainably that can sustain itself or can function sustainably that's pretty much and then so let's take a look and see what's what uh, has been happening already in communities to 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 work that that's sort of the 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 uh no, top of my head outline thanks Klaus. I am, uh, pete you're muted right now um that's great klaus thank you uh, I'm, I'm, I, I have a suggestion, which is to take what Klaus just said off the transcript and, and, you know, clean it up a little bit, and then work that down to, uh, you know, two sentences. If it's easy for you to reach right now, because you seem to have live transcript ease, uh, please do. If not, I'll go find it in the transcript after we have done. No, it. it's it's here. Brett, if you can paste it in the chat, I will copy paste it over here into the page. Um, I'm gonna well I I would suggest that we move over to HackMD. Um well we're almost done with we've got 20 minutes left in the call. I'm I'm happy to play copy paster. Um I think we could I think we could well I think we could work that piece uh into something uh in the next 15 minutes. Uh um, or we can do it offline. I'm I'm good with that too. Okay. Or we could do Google Doc. Uh, uh, even better. I love Google Docs. Oh, good. <laughs>
Um, all right, let me uh, let me open a Google Doc and and uh, while you find the text, in the meantime, Gene, you've got the floor. Yeah, I, uh, yesterday and today both, I watched how I fell in love with a fish again because I sort of can't get enough of that TED talk, and and at the end of it, Dan Barber says, people continuing to ask him, how are you going to feed the world? And he said he doesn't like the question. And he said the answer is not the current agribusiness model because it's a business of liquidation. Uh, even though you're feeding more people more food for less cost, he said it never produces anything really good to eat. He said the real question ought to be how to enable communities to feed themselves. And, and that sticks, every time I watch the video, that phrase sticks with me. Enabling communities to feed themselves, which is, which seems to ring true in the examples that I've seen to find on the internet, like Todd Morton and the and the community housing group in in Portland and and other ones. So, I just thought I would bring that up one more time. Thanks, Gene. I like that talk as well. Got it in my brain. Um... When was the last time I mentioned something you didn't have in your brain? <laughs> it happens. It's like Stump the Band with uh, Johnny Carson back in the day. If Doc Severinsen can't play the tune, you win uh, like a meal in a restaurant or something like that. Except that I, I don't have those coupons, but still. Uh, Pete, you're muted again. <laughs> Trying to keep and, you guys away from the noise. Um, how about if I share my screen with the Google Doc? Sounds great. And and everybody's got a link to the Google Doc. We are in. Thanks. Um, you are anonymous chinchilla to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world is changing the way we and the way we raise and keep insurers is now. Uh, we have to work locally because soil and climate and access to water and socioeconomics. Uh, social economics. Socioeconomics. Socioeconomics. Thank you. Um, thanks. And once that is done, then we move on to B, to build a sustainable economy. Um, can you say that again, Klaus, you said build. Uh, and then B, you know, build a sustainable economy or, or, or build an economy that can, uh, that, can uh, that, that is sustainable, can function sustainably. Yeah. Um, so 
can we take this as an outline of our outline of our quick first book? It's a good start. I can basically put I, I can copy paste that into the obsidian doc that I've got going. I, before you do that, out. I would like yeah. to I, I dropped my share because I'm embarrassed, but <laughs> let me redo it. Um, uh, I, I would like to get down to like a sentence and a half. Here's what this book is about. Um, so let me try our friend here real quick. Um, so Klaus, this is, it, it's, I think it's oriented the wrong way, um, or it, it's, it's pretty good, but it's not quite right. So how would you change this to make it better? Uh, raising and consuming food is causing serious environmental problems. Um, <clears throat> the way we raise and consume food at this time is causing serious environmental problems. Um, to address these issues, um, communities must, I mean, to, to address these issues, farmer, farmers must work To address these issues, farmers must work um, must work locally, must must work within their uh, particular bioregion, within their particular bioregion to stay within the <clears throat> must work within them to stay within the the boundaries of soil, water, uh, climate, and socioeconomics. Try that one and see what comes out of it. Uh, you know, this is, I, this is, um, uh, I'm not, I, I like this. This is getting pretty close to, to what I'd want. Um, I, I think there's one more one um, uh, we present. Uh, and overview. Um, I'm gonna write these issues because um, I'm trying I'm trying to be quick instead of trying to be thoughtful. And an overview of these issues and point towards uh, towards solutions already. Uh, point towards uh, prototype solutions already out there, that sort of thing. So, um, so for me at least, uh, I I like the I like the amount or I like the depth which with which this covers what we're trying to do, and it's too much for me to keep in my head at one time. So, this is getting down to where I I can tell what we're working on and whether you know whether this you know this chunk of whatever this nugget is inside or outside of these boundaries. So I I this is getting pretty close for me. And and for everybody else, I presume. Uh, so so Klaus, would you classify anybody who grows anything as a farmer? Would I do what? Would you classify anyone who grows anything as a farmer? 
anything grows anything to eat. In other words, one of the sentences said, work with farmers. Okay. Yeah, what this doesn't, uh, uh, yeah. What, what this misses is that the farmer is, is only one part of the equation, right? Because from, from the farmer needs markets and markets need to participate you know, in the entire change management process. So, so that, that uh, is not expressed here, no. And I think our audience is everybody growing food from farmers too people with green thumbs in their living rooms with hydroponics or raised bed gardens on their rooftop or anything like we're, we're, we're very interested in people um, who aren't, who don't think of themselves as farmers, but are growing food, which would be a good reason to sort of loosen this up and broaden the scope. Yes. I'm going to suggest that that's a follow on. I, I think our readers are those people. I think that the people that we're describing are actually Funny, I want to say commercial, but commercial is not quite the right word. Professional. Um, I I think I I think it's more important to talk about uh, this uh, bioregional scale, so it doesn't include people um, growing stuff on their on their patio. But urban farming actually can produce a lot of food that people in herbs need. Totally agree. Okay. Um, and the first tranche is. Let's take the existing system and and make a big chunk uh, replacing it, rather than all of the different ways that we could replace it. You know, fine grained. I think we should get to that story. I think this the the presenting story is here's something that's you know roughly in the same order of magnitude scale, um, and this is the way it needs to be soon. And and the the muggles making food could be a spinoff later book but not I part agree. of the very first yeah. book that would be yeah. lovely and we, that would be a, that would be a very nice riff on the theme yeah we could also replace farmers with uh to address these issues we must grow food respecting the boundaries of particular of our particular bioregion you know then then you bypass this whole farmers issue can i say grow and consume food we must go and consume food by staying yeah, within our particular bioregion, to stay within the boundaries, yeah. <clears throat> so the bioregion as a framing issue feels here like a limitation on the thesis, not an expansion of why this matters and why it's a great thing. Do we want to emphasize the bioregion in paragraph two? I think yes. <laughs> Is, um, it that, is, I, it that, is it that central as part of my Yes, question? I think it is actually it is central. perfectly central. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's the focusing thing. Uh, so to me, the examples that I was thinking about for the six case studies, none of them have to do with bioregion anything. They're not good examples of a bioregional initiative. They're great examples of a city or neighborhood initiative. Rock on, I, no problem. But the, bio, I, the bioregional aspect here to me implies that everything we write in the book needs to have bioregional as its driver. And I don't know a lot of bioregional stuff. I, I think that's exactly a reason to do it. Um, because it I think- It feels limiting right to me. Focus. Uh, it feels uh, focusing to me uh, so, in a way that, that, that gets to the heart of the problem. So then I think the solution is you can use those case studies and say, here's a, a city, here's, you know, here's a town, um, this is an example of how to how to uh, change the food system in a bioregion. It's not it's not a complete example of a, a of bioregional change, but it's you can see from there you could potentially scale up to get to a bioregion. Anybody else want to jump in about the word bioregion, whether you feel yeah, like I mean, positive or negative? You may not be aware of it, but uh, I mean, even here in Bend, we went out uh, to buy some seeds yesterday and some stuff. Well, there are certain uh, when you talk to the to the specialists here, they will tell you that in this region this doesn't go. But here are some seeds uh, that are specialized. They work better in in a more shaded environment. They work better in cooler temperatures and so on. 
So, so the to to deal with your low and, and then no access to water. I mean, what do you go in Arizona versus uh, in in Florida? You know, but that's advice any nursery would have given you twenty years ago. Well, correct. The the and it has little to do with. I mean, it, it's like, hey, here's what grows in our neighborhood, and 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 as the neighborhood temperature and and aquifer change, that advice changes. But that's just normal. That's not. So the the, the problem is that where yeah. the 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 problem that we've got ourselves into is that you don't take advice about your food from your local nursery. You take your advice about your food from Conagra, which is so much more interesting to me. Well, so you're right that, you know, it's not a new, uh, an, it's not, we're not talking about a new system, really. What we're talking about is changing the food system from being um, uh, multinational, you know, global uh, food systems into back into regional food systems. So if we're making an assertion like that, then I could extrapolate a sentence that's something like, hey, you farmer may feel like a prisoner of the ConAgra big ag industrial complex system, which has made an elegant trap for you. A way out is to band together in bioregional um, sales networks and uh, measurement systems and whatever else. And that is a much different and larger and interesting statement to me. That is kind of controversial and awesome and let's go. And it feels like something to say sort of as a solution in a sense. And it's very specific because you may feel trapped by the big agriculture system is a claim that's going to hit only a few, like, like a few people we were trying to reach. But that's very different from Bioregionalism is important here. I, they 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 seem very consonant to me, and um, I you know I both of those both of those stories need to be told. Both of them uh -huh. go together well. Uh, which one we tell first is kind of a, a shakan al sagu. I think it's you know um, I I think this one this one seems like the two hundred one version of this. So this is the primer, and this is the uh, you know digging in. And my, two things: my concern is that the primer is going to turn people off or sound uninteresting because it's too prim. And number two, I just want to point out that we're acting as an editorial board now and as co-writers, and it's making me very happy. Um, I, so the the if the primer turns off people because it's too boring or too easy or too early. I think we've succeeded in our quick first book thing. <laughs> um, I the the goal of this book is to get something done in the next week or two, not to make the best book about the subject, right? Um, and then a next step is to make a better book, and the next step is to make a better book. Yeah. So I'm totally sure. good with that. Also, don't 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 get stuck on the technical issue of raising crops. The socioeconomic component of dealing in bioregion is also very important to what you call. And so, I mean, the, I mean, that this has to do with ethics, I mean, with with ethnic backgrounds, racial backgrounds. I mean, there are all kinds of population groups. You know, even within a, a given climate, want to call something different. So, bioregions is more than just. No, I mean, it's soil, water, climate, and socioeconomics. Uh -huh. I, I like that. Makes sense. So, though, based upon Klaus's last statement, within particular bioregions is redundant with boundaries of soil, water, climate, and socio socioeconomics. Uh, they're kind of the same thing. It's uh, We haven't wordsmithed this to... to... Well, we're explaining what a bioregion is, uh, yeah. Jane. Well, agreed, Jane. This is just not properly worded yet. It's not the. Okay. Cool. Um, next steps. Uh, why, don't I, why don't I put a link to this document in the Obsidian page for this? Uh, so that we can find this doc easily. Does that make sense? Um, or do I want to copy paste this over to Obsidian or do we want to use some other mechanism? I, I think I would copy and paste it over to Obsidian. I like uh, that we have this Google doc. I like that we're sort of co-editing. Yeah. Um, if we're, if we're going to pick it up and co-edit it more uh, next week, I think that's great. Um, I also wonder if we're going to do any homework between now and then, and maybe we won't. What should our homework be? 
Um, honestly, do we have a few more minutes? I do. Um, uh, honestly, what I would do again is this. Um, Uh, so I use 3.5 there. I'd probably redo this with with four, but it takes longer. Um, so the next step that I would do is is generate an outline like this that people feel happy with, and then um, and then go out. You know, continue to kind of fractalize on, until it's yep. finished. And and I'll point out that every chapter heading here, except for the conclusion, is about bioregionalism. I think that's lovely and super important. Huh. Maybe I I don't understand so, enough. So and I, I think that um, and if you could take notes on, well, shall we take? So let's let's do uh, agenda for next meeting. Sounds good. May eighth. And what, what impact does it have on farming? Yeah. On food, not just farming, just food. Cool, thanks. Um, so then, uh... So I, I think the next step is to take, I'll, I'll drop this or something better uh, into the Google Doc mm -hmm. uh, as an outline. Um, and then uh, I think a lot of the work is agreeing on, you know, we like this outline and then we could either start to fill it in or assign homework based on filling in these parts or whatever. Um, oh, real quick, by the way, a, a thing that I learned from reading about how writers write books, um, uh, and this is for fiction books more than this, this kind of book, but having that outline reminds me of it. Um, there are two kinds of people. There are pantsers uh, and outliners. So the pantsers uh, literally sit down at a typewriter and start typing, and they're flying by the seat of their pants. They don't know what is going to happen next in the chapter. Um, and then the outliners, uh, you know, they use something like Scrivener or whatever, and they do this and they keep uh, doing top level stuff and then they do next level down stuff and they, they do the whole book fractally like that. So we're kind of doing the, the outlining version of this, which I think is okay, given the team and the, the topic and stuff like that. Cool. I just uh, put that into my chat GPT. The yep. first sentence that you came up with here yeah, is really actually quite interesting. <clears throat> uh, you... Yeah, nice. Cool. Very nice. Cool. I'm going to copy that into the thank the you. Talk. I'm wondering if when this is done, we might have a little guidebook that we would want to give to like town boards and stuff like that of things that, you know, uh, things that they might want to do to prepare their town. 
Does yeah. that sound useful? One, one way this could roll out is we create basically three chapters we like that have the essence of the argument. And then we write intros for town boards, for small farmers, for schools, for name somebody else, uh, food resellers, you know, food wholesalers. Um, and that becomes a series of different publications because really easy to, to hit a button and, and spit out a different kind of pub. Um, and then we tune the content to different audiences that way. And as we discover things that apply to one but not the others, we make that special for that edition. Well, so I just want to say the one thing that regardless of what somebody's politics are, the one phrase that makes them their ears perk up when they hear supply chains, regardless of where they fall on the spectrum, supply chains is something that they listen to. Cool. This works for me. Did are you we, mention homework, uh, or, or are we are we okay? Uh, I think I think we're okay. Uh, uh, we don't have enough coherence, kind of. Um, we we don't have a, a you know we have a, the idea of how we're going to move forward, but we don't quite have it all coherent yet. I think so. I wouldn't do homework, um, but it's looking good. Mm -hmm. Um, Jerry, uh, I look at I look at this Google Doc and I see needing the whole book to be a massive wiki pretty soon. I wonder if you see that or you see something different. Uh, how do you mean what you're saying? Um, I think we go to the I think what you're saying is we go to the folder that's where the we thought books would live and we create a new folder for this book. And then we yep. move these pages over there. Yes. If that's what you're saying, yes. I'm saying something very similar, which, um, but I, I would put in a whole new wiki, but yeah. No, um. <laughs> no. You you so underestimate the, the mental cost of remembering what wiki something is in and, and shifting between wikis and all that. Yep. yep. It's just it's just like fluid for you and I you will lose me. Like I will not make it over to the other wiki. Uh, it's totally fine. That's yeah. why I asked to okay, get your okay. answer. <laughs> Thank you. you, you my, my heart clenched when you said that. <laughs> um, uh, so, that, so then we'll have the, the flip side problem of how do you ab abstract just the book from the whole wiki? But well, I'm hoping we the folder structure will better. help will help yeah. us discipline to keep things in you know to keep the documents of a of a of a, of a particular book in a folder. Even though we don't really like folders that much, um, uh, I I may take a swing at at making new folder in the wiki and putting pages, turning this into pages, um, because awesome. the 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 next step after that is making lots more pages, right? Or either either continuing to grow this thing, or so I probably each of the uh, each of these chapters, um, so called. Uh, each of these is probably a good page. So I don't know that we want five chapters. Do do we want five chapters, or, or do we care? Yeah. So I I uh, without having really thought about it, this outline looks pretty good to me. And so then a chapter for me in this kind of structure is maybe a couple book pages. It's not very long. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, you'd, you'd want, I see a wiki page for each of these, what we call chapters. And then you might end up with a couple drafts of, of it, or you might end up with some, some extra chapters and go, well, we have to cover this chapter too. And at the, at the end, you know, you've got 12 pages, uh, 20, 20 pages, wiki pages. All right. Rather than one long Google Doc. Peter Berg is apparently like a core bioregionalist. Hmm. He wrote a book, The Biosphere and the Bioregion, Essential Writings of Peter Berg. Uh, it's a super it? important uh, concept for uh, American agriculture. Uh -huh. 
No, because it, 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 I mean, when you think of Europe, or think about any other part of the world, you know, whether that's Japan, and so, not only do the Japanese have a specific food type and culture, they also have regional variations because within Japan, obviously, there are different bioregions. So you see the same in Germany, in France, in Italy, everywhere. You know, you have a, a core cuisine uh, that that. that uh, that is then augmented regionally because something is just really conducive for here, you know. So mushrooms, for example, they go only in one particular region, so they incorporate it into that cuisine, you know, things of that sort. So and the the industrial, you know, American food food system that you see in Australia, Canada, I mean, basically in the New World countries, completely lost the historic perspective of uh, the relationship of your food to uh, the environment and where it comes from. Uh, so, and, and overpowers it with technology and, uh, and, and chemicals and so on. And so that is a return to you know, thousands of years of, of agricultural evolution you know, where these, these mishaps happened because they're mentioned in the Bible, right? I mean, the biblical authors figured out that there is a certain practice that you have to follow to keep your life, to keep your soil alive because they killed it obviously and then they figured out why how they killed it and how you keep it alive right so these but these norms uh have gotten lost here in the in the so-called new world great uh klaus says that uh, relocalization is somewhere around there too I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, there's a there's a phrase that I've heard some people use, relocalization or something like that. I think that falls into it. Yeah. Um, good work, folks. Yes. Awesome. Thank Happy. you. Very good. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao.